Gemma. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you for joining me. That's all right. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Um, I'll introduce myself, I'm Tom. Hi Tom. Um, me and TJ started up Kentish Town a number of years ago now. Um, I have actually met you before at the um, Battle of the Bridge game, but TJ um, probably wouldn't have introduced me to you because he, he, does, <laughs> he doesn't really like to introduce me to his friends. So, um... <laughs> you need to have a word with him. Have a word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice how to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> how are you? How's lockdown for you? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge, but it's, um, it's good family time, I think, um, and good self-reflection time. Um, but it's a challenge as a footballer. It's a challenge. So. Mm. How are you keeping fit? Um, so we've been. I've been given a program from from Tottenham, obviously to follow, um, which all the, all the football players will, and um, just try my best to follow that and stay motivated, really. But um, so far, so good. So far, so good. It's hard not being able to kick a ball. Yeah, but there's there's always a way. I, I don't mind kicking a ball. TJ will tell you that. I'll, uh, <laughs> I, I don't mind a bit of uh, some kick ups and some from freestyling and things like that. So it's it's alright. I just I just miss um, the the competition um, and things like that to, to play against people, and that's what's missing right now. I think when you played it for so long, you just want to get back, don't you? You really do sort yeah. of miss it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a challenge, but hopefully, um, you know. Maybe Back soon. sooner yeah. rather than later. Yeah. Um, so, first question: How old were you when you started playing football or started getting into football? Um, I I say five. Oh, five really? Yeah, I've, I've got an older brother, so um, and he's um four and a half years older than me. So, um, and he was a really really good footballer as well. So, I I think I just wanted to to be as as good as him at, at everything really, whether it was a PlayStation um. <laughs> Anything, uh, racing, football, and I think I just got into football through through Alex, really. And where was that? Was that local to you? You just started playing for a team and stuff? Yeah, I, I think it was... Um, I mean, it all starts in the back garden, doesn't it? And mm. he always made me go in goal, which I never appreciated. <laughs> but, um, and then, yeah, I, I played at school. And my mum didn't know I was really any good. Um, my mum never really put any pressure on And the PE teacher obviously said to my mum, look, she's, she's really good. Will she play for the boys' team? And... It just went from there. I went and played for my local um, boys' grassroots team and um, went through the same journey that most female players would have gone through, which was um, no one really thought a girl was going to be any good on a boys' team. And I think within 10 minutes, my mum said all the parents on the opposition teams were saying, tackle her, she's beating you all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it just went from there, really. Um, so, yeah, grassroots boys' football, really. A lot of the girls seem to come through grassroots. I mean, we've got three at our club that play for three different sort of ages. They seem to come through a lot of the boys' teams more than what they do the girls' sort of youth teams, don't they? Yeah, I, I think it's really good for the girls as well um, to to play with the boys as well. I think it um, develops um, the, your competitive game. Um, I, th I think it's massive and I definitely wouldn't change my journey mm. from playing with boys. I truly believe that um, that boys and girls should train together. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that was going on onto my question. So, what age did you play up to? Like the boys' age, what age did you play up to? I don't know. I mean, secretly, I've, I've probably played with. If I didn't play for the grassroots boys, I was playing with my friends anyway. Mm. Um, at the local Astros, like on the street, anywhere really. But I think for a team, I think I must have left. When I was eight or nine, maybe. Um, so, but I, I never stopped playing with boys. Um, I, I'd still say I'll go and play with my mates now when I'm not in, <laughs> under any kind of contract, um, because it's just, it's just always, a, it's just a challenge. Mm. Like it's, it's, it's great. I, I, I totally believe in it, and, and I've, I've enjoyed it all, all throughout my whole career. So yeah. Um, why? So Arsenal was your first team, was it? Yeah, um, well, I was at Watford before, um, but I'd, the Arsenal were like the first official kind of youth academy that I, I played for, um, which I joined when I was, I think, nearly 14. So quite late, really. Mm. Um, but it, it was a good time to go, and I, I think I developed well. Mm. But I also enjoyed um, playing in a... In a 
I don't know how to expl- uh, how to kind of describe in a less official environment. I enjoyed the freedom of that, and prior to Arsenal, because I think it gave me my character as a footballer mm. to be. I'm quite free spirited when I play. Uh, I like to beat players one v one, and I enjoyed that freedom. I think, and I think Arsenal um, developed me into more of a well-rounded footballer. You see, you went in at Arsenal at obviously a good sort of time when you sort of yeah. made you, you. They were quite dominant. Well, I mean, they still are kind of now. Yeah. They're getting back into it, but at that sort of time, there wasn't anyone even competing with them. Really, was there? Um, no, I think Everton were quite and um, Charlton as well um, were quite um, close. But I mean, I, I would not change my football journey. But growing up at Arsenal, and I'd, I'd have to say. Um, for a personal achievement to break into that first team um, when I was a teenager it was a massive, massive deal because that was not an easy team to get into with the, with the players that were there and the players that had been there before. It was um, a big achievement for me to break into a first team when you've got the likes of Kelly Smith and Rachel Yankee in there. It's just It just wasn't easy. But um, So, yeah, Arsenal fantastic fantastic to really build character and, and, and develop all the time every day I always say it's a kind of Kirsty Peeling that she played in the kind of the wrong yeah. generation didn't she really I remember Kirsty very well <laughs> what a player as well by the way that's what, what I mean player. she yeah. um, kind of was in the wrong generation if she was playing now I think that she'd have been a lot better off <laughs> she um, I mean uh, she had the best right foot cross I think I've ever seen <laughs> Um, and I'm sure she'd love to hear that. <laughs> yeah, she, and she was she was really good and, and really um, encouraging to me as a youth player coming through as well. And I, I really admired her and, and all the help that she gave me um, in my journey as well. And um, she was such a great player. Fantastic! I'm glad. I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure she appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what was it like being in that Arsenal team? Because they were so dominant. That, that you won the league. Um, that was your first league title, wasn't it? So how old was you when you won the league there? Um, it's, it's insane, really, because um, every year I was at Arsenal, I think we won a trophy. Mm. Um, so I must have got my first team debut in a Charity Shield final. Um, so I think um, we won that. Um, so I picked up a medal straight away. Nice. And, <laughs> which was, I mean, I, I didn't really, I, I must have played about. 10 minutes but to, to get an opportunity was mm. you know something I was grateful for um, so every year we were winning trophies FA Cups you know Premier League titles and um, so yeah I was picking up trophies since I was about 17 18 years old um, so what was it did you go out every game thinking you was going to win that sort of you know I was yeah. speaking to Robert I mean, the other day about it and about the domination they kind of had you just go out and think you were going to kind of win yeah, I think it's it's not thinking you're going to win. I think it's the confidence in, in everyone around you that you've got, you know, a whole squad full of players that can win a game for you. And mm. the confidence that you'd have going out, you'd know if you had a poor five minutes and you've got someone else that's going to pick you up and deliver something. And um, you just there was just quality everywhere. And, and, you know, you'd never doubt, like, anyone around you and I think that's the confidence you have to have when you're part of a team in order to win things that you you just don't even second guess anything because you know the quality of the players around you and and the coaching going into it and um, how much you value the club um, to go out and and when you have all that as a collective you're only destined to to, to, you know at bare minimum if you don't win to have like a good performance and you know maybe a few faults missed you out on a win so I was just so confident in in everything like in everyone all the time I mean why wouldn't you be when you've got um Jane Ludlow Kirsty Peeling Rachel Yankee the list goes on like it's it's insane how many trophies did you end up winning do you know Hmm. I'd have to to go and have a look uh, and count properly um so but but a lot (laughs) um and um just just a, an experience um, in my career, really, throughout my whole career, I don't forget, really. Uh, and then you went over to America. Um, yeah. Went, that kind of transition. Yeah. And was that when female football, was, you know, it was it was big over there, but was that when it was starting to take off a lot more? Yeah, um, they designed a pro league um, over there um, 
and I was at Arsenal and we were doing really well and um, it was it was it, it was attracting the biggest players in the world so it was something that I I really wanted to go and challenge myself doing um, so when it first started Kelly Smith Alex Scott Eni Aludko um, Anita Asante they all went over there Karen Carney all, all, the, all the you know really great players mm. of the game were, were going over there and um, I, I really wanted to get that opportunity so when the opportunity came I um, I obviously wanted to go and challenge myself and, and go and play over there and I was fortunate enough to play with um, some of the best players in the world over there um, with Marta Alex Morgan and uh, Christine Sinclair. So it was, um, it, that was a, an unreal experience. I'll never forget. So that was. Uh, what, what was the transition like between Arsenal playing in the like, English league to the Americans? Um, I mean, I, back then, I, I think I would have said that that, that the, the incredible Arsenal team that I was a part of, um, I'd definitely say technically were another level another level um but then i obviously went over to america and i had the opportunity that i didn't have at arsenal to train full-time professional which mm. means we weren't at arsenal then and um to go and train every day build fitness levels and um it was a different the, the type of football was different it was different it was more physical mm. and the football was still great i mean the, the team i had was, was it was unbelievable um i just think um it was just different to go and be professional rather than training two, three times a week. It was just my fitness levels just just lifted so much. And then you come back and went to Liverpool and you won the league there. Yeah, so I came back from America. So the American league, it broke down. Um, oh, okay. They kind of had um, a little bit of a financial loss. Um, so I returned um, with um, Kelly and Alex to Arsenal and, for, and did my journey there. Um, because it was home for me, I, I wanted to come back. It was mm. it was in my blood, so I came back to Arsenal first before moving on to uh, 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 to, to Liverpool. And you won the league at Liverpool, so you must be some sort of lucky Liverpool. charm. Uh, maybe, but <laughs> again, at Liverpool. I mean, some of the players we had: Farrell Williams, Lucy Bronze. I mean, they're all household names in in football now. That arguably are probably some of the best players that England have ever had um, to go and play with them and, and we won the league on quite a dramatic finish to the end of the season actually so um, yeah that was that was a great experience but I, I wanted to come home because I'm a southern <laughs> girl I'm a south, south <laughs> I'm a London girl and so yeah I came back out, down to south and then you went on to Chelsea yeah went on to Chelsea um, went and played for Emma Hayes who I know is a local for you guys yeah um, over there um who's been um, a big uh, mentor in my career. Um, so it was ine inevitable that I was going to go and sign for Emma and go and play for Chelsea because um, she was a coach that um, always put a lot of confidence and installed a lot of confidence in me. So um, it was inevitable that I, I would probably end up and go and play for Emma. She seems like she's got a very good reputation. I mean, I hear obviously a lot from TJ, but she's one of the few, well, only one that I ever hear that's kind of mentioned with kind of men's jobs, isn't she, in terms of her coaching ability? Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, I've, Emma was working at Arsenal when I was there as a youth mm. player, kind of starting to establish myself in the first team. And from my experience with Emma, I, she always installed her confidence in me and that I had to keep working hard and you know any speed bump I hit she would she'd support me with that but also not let me ever take it easy um but I mean she, she and she was consistent with that th throughout my even when I went to America I, I didn't play for Emma but she was still there to help me whenever I if, if times were tough or um, at the end of the phone and um you know, there are tough times in football and, and you do have people that you can, um, that you just are your your coaches of your career that mm. you would talk to. And, and I found that in Emma and I, I knew I wanted to play for her. And um, when you've got a, a manager like that, that does gun for players and look after players, um, they're going to get success because you build a unity. And 
Um, she's she's worked incredibly hard at Chelsea to to get the success she has, and and it hasn't been easy. I mean, you you have to start from mm. somewhere, and um, when you you keep good relationships with people, and with people will go and play for you. I mean, the season before I joined Chelsea, Katie Chapman signed, Jilly Flaherty signed, um, and it's just endless. Like the, the players that she's. You've got to keep a good relationship with people and, and they'll play for you. So she's uh, she's done a great job and she's worked very hard and built a good team of mm. staff around her to, to get the success she's had. She, she deserves it. Speaking of staff then, what's, uh, what's TJ like as a coach? Can't go without giving him a mention. You know what, TJ... Um, really technical... I'm sure you know, working <laughs> with TJ, I mean, he's... Um, he's really his attention to detail is there. I used to love speaking to him about football and um, no matter what, whatever it was, whether it was about coaching, whether it was about my own game, about even my body shape, like to, to hit a ball. I mean, I did a lot of work with TJ around like a lot of finishing and first touch work and technical work with TJ. And um, it was just always building and installing confidence in me um, with my time that I had with him. And um, I really appreciated that time. And, and sometimes in football, your manager doesn't always have time for you. So, mm. you know, other staff have got to help you. And TJ would always, you'd always be aware of, you know, you might not have to say it, but you'd always be aware that, you, you know, maybe you're not having a good time. And um, I think as a pro, you, you still need that. It's not just kids that need that. As a pro, you need someone that's still helping you individually, still, you know, what's going on? Like, do you need a little bit more help doing this? Oh, just those little ideas planted in your head all the time. And, um, yeah, it's such a pleasure to work with TJ was, for sure. I'm sure he'd be very happy to hear all that. We're uh, we're, we're skip past any more because I don't think his head's getting his head's getting a bit too big he now. He did pay me yesterday to say <laughs> that, but, yeah. <laughs> I bet he did, to be fair. <laughs> um, you won the FA Cup in front of the biggest attendance that's ever been. What was that like? Unbelievable. Um, to play it to play at Wembley was it's, it's incredible as it is. Um, to go and do that and and go and do it and and the thing that was massive for me was I was part of a team at Chelsea that was we were just we we were dominating that season. Um, you know, alongside Man City and um, to go and play with those players in Wembley was and we had such a good. Um, unified team that everyone and to go and play out there um, in front of that crowd at Wembley was just one of the I'll never forget that experience and it's um, even the photos and everything now mm. I still have I can still remember very clearly and it was so important um, to the club as well and, and, and that was important it was their first FA Cup as well so um, to be a part of that with them was, was, was really good Seems that obviously women's football seems to get bigger and bigger every year, doesn't it? It seems to build up more of a reputation, build bigger fan base and stuff now as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it grows every year. It is, it's funny. Um, whatever interview you do or whoever you speak to, they say women's football is growing all the time. And I, I say the same thing every single time. Every year it's getting bigger because the publicity is getting bigger every mm. year. But every time there's a major tournament, people seem to gravitate to it and then we get more people coming out to watch us and the, and the quality is going up as well I mean mm. you can't like to, to, to watch good quality that's what people want to see they want to be entertained and um, women's football it's becoming gravitating to watch now mm. um, so you, you went to Reading obviously for a season and then you've gone over to Spurs now what was the two clubs like What's, what, what is it like now then? yeah I mean um, I spent a year at Reading um, definitely working hard. Um, made some great friends there as well, actually, that I'm still in touch with now. And I'd say um, I'll probably be in touch with them for the, for the rest of my life, hopefully. <laughs> um, and i learned a lot as well, actually, with, with some good coaches and um, playing in a different position as well. So definitely taking on a lot of experience from there. And um, I'm, I'm in re a really happy place with Tottenham now. Um, um so, yeah. What's the ambitions like with Tottenham? Because obviously a new club has just come up. Yeah. Um, and they've obviously they've done pretty well by the looks of it this season and stuff like that, haven't they, as well? And getting someone like your experience in as well is obviously going to help them a lot. Yeah, it's, um, I think it was a, a question of, like, questions for a lot of people about how well that we'd be doing this season. Um, I know a lot of the uh, media was, that I think, thought that maybe Tottenham would, would be in relegation. Um, but it's clearly not the case at the moment. 
as it stands. So, I mean, um, but we've done so well and, and it's a big club with, with a big future as well. And, um, and, and that's, that's a reason why I wanted to sign for Tottenham um, because their, their, their ambitions and, and their future is bright. Um, they've got a great group of people um, running it that have a lot of care uh, for people, which I think is so important. For me as a player, I want to feel value. I feel value there. Um, and, and a great group of girls as well. They seem to have got quite a few players from here, there and everywhere, haven't they, in this season to kind of gain, glue it together, a bit of experience and I suppose a bit of the youth that they've bring through, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, the girls did so well to be promoted last season and um, the team was, 